Dude, I love this part of the league. It's so good, isn't it? All right, let's go, guys. You got your bingo sheet? I saw. You got a... Uh... I do, I do. All right, here we go, dude. It's been so long. I'm so excited. <laughs> it actually has been too long. <laughs> actually too long. It's starting. Dude, do you think they'll start with lore and, and VFX? <laughs> I do want to see the art. The art <laughs> direction. Hi, I'm Chris Wilson from Grinding it's... Gear Games. Welcome to GGG Live. Today, we're going to show you an exclusive reveal of Path of Exile Settlers of Kalga, which launches next week on July 26th. Twitch drops are enabled on today's livestream, so make sure you follow the instructions below in order to claim your Corsair back attachment. In today's stream, we will take you on a deep dive into the new Settlers of Kalga Challenge League. We'll cover the league mechanics, its new and revised crafting systems, a new trade market system for currency, some sweeping balance improvements, including two ascendancy class changes, end game improvements, some further additions the to the campaign, year. and some what quality of fuck? life features. We'll then talk about our console native port releases and the features that come alongside them. Finally, we'll show you our new supporter packs, ending with a live Q&A session, where Ziggy D will ask Path of Exile's game director, Mark, your questions from Twitch chat. Holy. After the live stream, we'll drop the full patch notes. I'll hand over to Mark now to introduce the new league. We're really Hi, innovated Mark. with the content in this league, and I'm really excited to see what everyone thinks. So let's just get right into it with the trailer for Path of Exile, Settlers of Kalgur. Let's just get right into it. Rayclast is a cursed land. You'd have to be mad to settle here. True. And yet... Welcome to King's March! It's not much yet, but with your help, we can erect the greatest city Rayclast has ever yep. seen. We'll need resources. Oh, wow. They're Mining actually doing settlers. Planning. Yeah? Actually doing it. Yo, okay. are we doing a settler stream before league launch? Maybe. Practice. Soon we'll attract settlers. Craftsmen. Is that Recombinator? Fortune that was a Recombinator! And of course, pirates. I'm arriving! But if we prevail, oh my gosh. our ships will be oh. heavy with gold. We hope to achieve the impossible. We hope to build Whoa. a home. There's boats! I love boats! Respect with gold? Gold? Huh? Wow, they're doing it. Huh? Gladiator Rework! I'm winning so many! <laughs> Massive, may they rebalance? But rebalance though. We gotta see. True, true. <laughs> so they're not gonna have melee. What? <laughs> I need to. Was... Yeah, we, we need to rewind. This. We need to rewind. Can we like watch that again? Just play the same thing over again. Was that Sentinel? I swear I saw Sentinel. In Path of Exile Settlers of Kalgur, you will encounter some familiar faces from the Expedition League Danig, Rog, Tujin and Gwenin are Kalgurin people who are trying to establish trade between Rayclast and their homeland. They have recruited many curious characters from Rayclast, including some you may recognize, but are also seeking help of a powerful exile, like me. yourself. A steel. Definitely me. You will first encounter Johan, the King's Hand and Lion Eyes Watch. He's there recruiting workers, traders, and exiles. Johan, under the command of the King of Kalgur, has been sent here to build a new city called King's March, which intends to become the hub of commerce between Rayclast and Kalgur. Soon, he will bring you to the planned site for King's March, which you'll notice has humble beginnings as just a tavern in a field. But with your help, it won't stay like this for long. It takes a lot to build a town. That's so cool. The Kalgurans will ask you to seek out resources that can be used to begin construction. On your adventures, you might find minerals such as crimson iron, which are veins of iron that have been overrun with corruption, spawning dangerous foes when you approach. Or perhaps orichalcum, which you will the have what? to liberate from the demons worshipping it. Petrified amber attracts mindless, blighted enemies. 
While bismuth has a this strong thing affinity seems to the elements and causes the area to become so unstable. Cool. If you're lucky, you might find Varisium, a material as valuable as it is dangerous and guarded by Cannibals, very powerful birds. Once you defeat these monsters, the deposit will automatically be tagged for mining. But first, we need to get someone to do the hard labor. And this is Circle Lee. This is, of course, a trade expedition and nothing is free. Miners, along with other workers that the Kalgurans have hired, must be paid in cold, hard gold. Which you'll notice is now dropping throughout Rayclast. Wow. You will have control about who gets hired into your enterprise. Once you have accumulated some gold, head to the town and talk to the recruiter, Ralph. He's been busy tracking down hardy folk across Rayclast who are looking for work. You'll notice each person has their specialties and a wage cost. Cool. It'll be up to you to hire and fire as you please. Over the course of the You're league, fired. you'll be searching for your perfect employees for each job. Once you have them, you'll have to keep them paid, safe, and alive, which we'll get into later. Alive? Here we have a prospect who has a specialty in mining. We'll start with that so we can begin to retrieve some of those resources we were talking about earlier. Let's go find some more and put our miner to use. Oh, we found a vein of Orichalcum ore. It's guarded by dangerous demons worshipping a strange shrine. The shrine buffs the demons, giving them power. But once you defeat them, you can seize that power for yourself. After that, we can tag the ore and our mining specialist will get to work. Soon, we encounter a few more deposits, each with a different dangerous encounter. After you have tagged the mineral veins, your miners will get to work collecting resources in real time. They might take a while, but will continue whether you are logged in or not. Cool. The work can be sped up by hiring more or better miners, and by upgrading the or mining station back packs. in King's March to I equip imagine. them with advanced pickaxes. <laughs> All right. Some time has passed and our miners have been able to get the resources back to town. We've also managed to collect some more gold too. We can now upgrade the town and build new structures. There's plenty of options. We just need to decide where to start. I think we'll start with the tavern, the beating heart of King's March. It can be upgraded instantly to improve the recruiter's prospects. And you can find various important NPCs relaxing here. Wow. Next, we'll upgrade our mining station. You can upgrade this to improve the efficiency of your miners and allocate our it's newly like a, hired workers to mine. A whole game. <laughs> yeah. You will That's eventually funny. need a smelter. We got a game in our where game. you can send your ore to turn into more valuable bars. Then we have the disenchanter, where you can bring your magic, rare, or unique items to be added to a queue to be disenchanted over time. The items will be broken down into thaumaturgic 24 dust, minutes. a new resource okay. used for crafting and shipping. We'll get more into that later. And of course, a town needs food. You could invest in farming, where you can yeah, select does. crops to grow and harvest. Food. But don't worry, you won't be manually watering anything. Ah, the wonders of delegation. <laughs> With all these resources piling up, there will be excess that we can spend. Let's talk about rewards in Settlers of Kalgur. Eventually, you can build a harbour and establish shipping routes between a number of different Kalgurin and Kadori ports for trade. What? You'll be able to pile your acquired resources onto these ships and send them to a port of your choosing, where your traders will haggle for the best deals. Each port will return specific rewards based on what you send them. They accept all types of resources, but will have a preferred type that they'll currently pay more for. Wow. And you'll want to get onto this, because eventually you could be bringing in shipments like this. <laughs> this. I want that one. Or even this. That one. <laughs> oh, it's gonna have a mage blood. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Okay, just I'm setting so expectations. With no free mage bloods yet. You'll notice that as we send more resources, this risk meter creeps up. Much like the dangers on the shores of Rayclast, there are dangers out at sea. Monsters, pirates, environmental hazards. You'll want to try keep your shipment safe. I'm playing trade this thing. 
You can do this by hiring workers that specialize in shipping. Or the maybe... more of them you add to the ship, the less risk there will be. Like this gentleman, who's famous for fending off even the most dangerous of pirates. Now let's get that shipment going, and we'll continue exploring Ray class while we wait for its return. That's so beautiful. This is the first Path of Exile League that experiments with true real-time mechanics. You can send out shipments, go and have lunch, and come back to your rewards. Many mechanics in the League work this way, so you'll always have some ongoing project or outcome to look forward to. When your shipment has returned, or met its demise, you'll get notified, and at your leisure you can return to the town to collect your rewards. Our shipment returned safely, so let's go see what we got. Ooh, they've sent us a unique item alongside our rewards. Ward. Perhaps hoping to secure us wow. as a loyal customer for a the future. A lot of ward. A lot of ward. Aside from shipping, the Kalgurans are big on their technology. They have hired Isla, a familiar face from the Heist League. She is an engineer who the Kalgurans have employed for a very exciting purpose. You're not the only one who understands how profitable running maps can be. Once at endgame, Isla can help you build a series of Kalguran modified map devices. You can then put a queue of maps into them. If you've hired a few skilled yeah, Atlas runners, they will put themselves to work running those I've maps for you I've suggested this is a mobile another. game. Look, more delegation. <laughs> Oh my god. Once again, you'll be notified when the rewards are ready to be collected. Wait, could you? You can put lots of maps in the queue, so don't feel obliged to go back there all the time. Be careful though. The difficulty of the map impacts the risk of your workers perishing. Permanently killed. Try to pick your best workers, or perhaps just ones you don't like. Consider the difficulty too. Sometimes it's better to just run it yourself. You'll wow. see there are many benefits to having a whole ass town at your fingertips. Let's talk about crafting services. There's you more! You should definitely consider building a runesmithing table. This is operated by Danig himself, using powerful Kalgurin blacksmithing arts. He can engrave runic magic onto your weapons using runes. There are many rune types runes and combinations to in choose our from, game? and you can unlock new crafts that can be Blood? applied to your weapons as enchantments. Some are seem our rare. design intention here is to take powerful effects you would usually only find on unique items, like this modifier, which you might recognize from Doom Fletcher's Prism. Danig can apply it to your two-hand maces. As an enchant. There are over oh, 100 Jesus. different special it's like reverse outcomes, LP. Ranging from ones very easily applied to very it's difficult. It's reverse LP. The rune types can be acquired through trade with Kalgur. One permanent flask. Or defeating powerful <laughs> bosses. Quite mini mage bless. The Kalgur and tech benefits don't end there. We're also bringing back a formerly overpowered crowd favorite. Recombination. Yes. Wow. Isla Everyone said I would copy him. She just needs you to help her with getting resources. You do say it every time, though. It you, you do it say it every as time, though. It's as it used to be, but it still allows you to combine two items together, eventually. hoping to get the best modifiers of each onto a single item. I want to play so much of this league. I'm going to play. So I'm never playing Between variety again. The town, shipping, and exploring, you'll be collecting a lot of extra gold. It is now the primary resource for two huge new quality of life features that they're we are putting they're trading, to test. dude. They're doing it already. Firstly, you can use gold to respec passive points. This is a feature from Path of Exile 2 that we've decided just makes sense to port back. That's the a lot of gold to respec. Are, the more expensive it gets. Oh. And the next one is absolutely massive. A currency trade market. They so did it. Sick. The Kalgurans have recruited Faustus. Another NPC from the high school. <sighs> he allows you to asynchronously buy and sell currency and most other stackable items with other players without the nuisance of ugh, price fixes and people who never respond. <laughs> yeah, All you need to people. do is select what currency you want, say what you have, no shot. and your ideal ratio. It works kind of like a real life stock market. I never thought they'd do this. Faustus will make the trade happen for you, so long as there is someone selling on the other end for the same rate or less. You'll be able to go back to blasting. I never thought I'd see this. While to be trusty Faustus you. does the dirty work. I, I only thought we'd see this if we had gold, and I didn't collection. think they'd add gold. All you need to do is pay him a small amount of gold for his time. Yeah, thanks. Cards on the table, 
This is an experiment to see if this type of asynchronous trading has a place in future Path of Exile releases. We are very excited to see how it goes. So it's not permanent. Yeah. Now, yeah. given that Faustus is an expert Ooh. in black market trade and shady deals, he also provides another service, Gwen offering in? items for gold. The items will generate with What's random like rarity, yeah, and on average, the modifiers on them are better than normal. This can be a very nice way to get some targeted items during the campaign. For serious crafters, it can be a great starting point for making those elusive, specific in-game items. Why are the life rolls so which high? Which perhaps you could take to the runesmith afterwards. It's worth noting that you can you invite mix. Faustus to your hideout, where he will always be available for respecking, currency exchange, and black market items. As your town grows, it will attract more attention, good and bad. Sailors of Kalgur features three endgame bosses that will close in on your operations, wanting a piece of the pie. They might capture and ransom your workers, even your entire ships. You'll have to make some tough decisions. Will you take them on? Or pay them off. One example of a boss is Sasan, the Bandit Lord. You won't stumble across this boss by accident. Instead, this unsavory character can come into your town at night and take your Atlas Runners hostage, wow. holding them for ransom. Oh, thank you. What happens next is up to you. Well, they nerfed Dark Mage a lot. Perhaps you'll refuse to negotiate <laughs> with bandits, <laughs> yeah. leading to a fight to defeat Sasan and rescue your workers. If you're not up for the heroics, you might simply pay Abandoned. the ransom in gold. Or perhaps these workers were especially disappointed <laughs> and you'll just leave them for See dead ya. in true Ray class fashion. <laughs> they knew what they were signing up for, right? Of course, the heroics might be worth it for other reasons. These bosses can drop new unique items. Hey, I don't worry. In sum, Settlers of Kalgur hmm. is a very experimental league with new mechanics that will completely change how you play the core game. We've been sitting on a lot of these ideas for a while and can't wait to share them with you. But there's a lot more to this expansion. Let's talk Crazy. about balance. Okay, here we go. Well, we no finally rebalanced the Gladiator. Hey. It's been a long time coming. Like Last, before, the there are I passive won. skills that allow <laughs> you to invest in bleeding 20%. and block. We've designed new skills replacing Aggravated. some of the old ones. Wow, that's huge. Like this, War of Attrition, which is very handy for long sustained boss fights. Further alongside the Gladiator Wow, theme, this new passive allows 100%. you to combine that's different insane. types while dual wielding to get a variety of powerful bonuses. For example, holding a dagger will give you more critical strike chance, while it's holding rich. a mace gives you more area of effect. Of course, you could just use Varanastra for all weapon type bonuses. Wow. And finally, we have a new notable which allows you to invest in the newly added retaliation skills. These are active skills which require you to meet a certain condition in order to use them. Okay. Once you meet that condition, you can unleash devastation on your foes. Here we have Eviscerate. I knew there would be new which skills. Which requires you to have a shield. Or for those who like to dual wield, Swordstorm, which is great for obliterating bosses. Here we have the Divine Retribution skill. This one has the condition requiring you to block. You can then unleash a devastating spell, causing lightning bolts to strike the ground in an X shape around your target location, doing huge amounts of damage. Conditional skills? Wow. And of course, in true Path of Exile fashion, there are many avenues to invest in these mechanics further on the passive tree and a new support gem. You are able to increase the leeway duration after meeting the condition, reduce the cooldowns, wow. or just increase their damage. The world's your oyster. The Gladiator wasn't the only ascendancy class we've changed. As we develop Path of Exile systems, we often find ourselves reusing mechanics, increasing their depth, and allowing more avenues to invest into them. As such, the Raider Ascendancy class found itself lacking, with many of its classes commonly available elsewhere. You're good at this. I think it's we want crazy. our Ascendancy classes to always feel like they're pushing the boundaries, allowing you to change your character in ways that are meaningful and ideally unique. As a result, we've straight up removed the Raider. Rest in peace. Oh. And we've added a new class in its place, 
the warden. What the fuck? This class is largely inspired by its predecessor Rip from the Bozo. Affliction League. With a few changes. Uh, oh, yeah. I literally the said they should just delete Raider. Right elemental <laughs> attacks. Changing the behavior of shock. Enhancing freeze. Wow. And replacing ignite with scorch. Wow. There's also a skill that allows you to go ballistic with your elemental damage periodically. Oh, I hate that. The class also grants bark skin. Oh, which wow. is a skill that can be used to mitigate physical damage from hits. After taking a number of hits, it increases your evasion, making it a great defensive choice. I was joking Finally, when I said the last thing the warden can specialize in is tinctures. Wow. These are an alternative to flasks from the Affliction League. We're bringing them back with adjusted mechanics. Wow. Two. Tinctures can be placed in your belt, replacing flasks. You can inherently only have one tincture active at a time, and it requires a melee weapon to use. While activated, they grant a powerful buff. Only melee? They can drop as magic items or the be modified has ranged with currency as well. to grant extra bonuses. Here is a prismatic tincture. This one increases elemental damage by 100% while active. Is that rollable now? You'll notice it has two extra effects. One is that it applies mana burn every second. Mana burn is a uh. debuff that builds up while tinctures are active that causes you to lose mana, losing more mana for each stack. Tinctures also have a cooldown. So once you have disabled one, uh. no other tincture can be enabled for a time. These changes make tincture use a more active and interesting choice than it was in Affliction. Both Mana Burn and the mm. cooldown can be modified through modifiers on the tinctures or on the passive skill tree. Players will want to maximize their tincture uptime for sure. Here we have a couple other tinctures. The Poisonberry tincture is excellent for poison builds. The Rose Thorn tincture is the choice for those wanting to deal critical strikes. You might be wondering, with the removal of the Raider, where has the Frenzy Charge investment gone? We've added a Frenzy Charge passive skill to the Deadeye, wow. replacing the Rupture passive skill. Rupture was On dog shit. On top of Ascendancy classes, we have revisited a number of core mechanics. This time taking pains to ensure easy access through the passive tree, skill gems, and simple items. They're actually we using Steel Mage's character here from Leslie. mechanics to be hidden behind layers of complexity. It's been nerfed that much. Let's just oh, rapid no. fire through the key points. <laughs> if you want more detail later, you can read the patch notes, which will be dropped after the live stream. Be sure to let us know what you think. There's a lot of changes, so be prepared for a bit of a shock to the system. Uh -oh. I expect it will take several days for the dust to settle on this one. Wow. I'm Firstly, scared. we've made some drastic alterations to melee skills. Let me just rip this band-aid off. Melee totem skill gems have been removed. I was hoping for that. Yeah. We're trying to adopt a philosophy with melee going forward that unlike other builds, it will be far less oriented around set and forget gameplay. You will deal the damage yourself and you should be rewarded for doing so. To compensate, we have buffed the damage on almost every single melee skill. As the majority of this damage growth comes from gem levels, we have also made them cost more mana as they level, but it's nothing like the mana costs on spells. Okay. Here are some examples of the damage and costs before and after. Heavy Strike has gone from dealing 313% attack damage at gem level 20 to a massive 552% oh, wow. attack damage. It's That's also worth noting it no longer knocks strike. enemies back. And Sweep has gone from dealing 281% attack damage to now dealing 664% attack damage at Sucks. gem level 20. These are just two examples, but the majority of melee skills are now dealing approximately 75% more damage at level 20. Of course, with melee comes close proximity combat, so you need some good defensive options. New base types with higher defensive values will now drop throughout the end game. As you reach yellow, red, and purple maps, you can expect to find higher tier base types in each. For example, Val Regalia and Hubris Circlet are no longer the best in slot items for Energy Shield. There are new Twilight. base types that surpass them. Combined with some quality changes, which we'll talk about soon, wow. 
you can now get better items than ever before in these slots. To compensate, we have reduced the amount of flat evasion and armor from the grace and determination auras. But overall, you're getting more defenses than before. This league! Yeah, this is gonna be crap. On top of this, we have buffed life modifiers on magic and rare equipment. You can now get as high as 189 additional maximum life from a single modifier on body armors. And more on other slots too. I'm, I'm waiting for the bad bit though. There's gonna be Town's a bad heart bit. Has also finally been restored it. to its former glory. You, you, and literally, once again you said this yesterday. I said this yesterday. I mentioned quality. Quality on weapons and armors is being changed to apply multiplicatively. In other words, weapons with full quality will give 20% more physical damage, and armor with full quality will have 20% more local defenses. For melee, this will mean a damage increase for almost all Anybody builds else? using physical damage attacks. Oh! And it will mean more evasion, armor, energy shield, and ward for all builds. Endurance charges no longer grant elemental resistances, but instead grant additional elemental damage reduction, making it multiplicative with resistances. Wow. You can now get 4% per charge, alongside the existing 4% physical damage reduction. To compensate, we have made some changes to the Juggernaut okay. and various unique items like Eternal Damnation. Uh-oh. You can get more maximum resistances from the tree, back, specifically around the Marauder class start. These, of course, can stack with the new elemental mitigation from Endurance Charges. Still have the one at the bottom too, by Marauder. On top of this, jewels can now roll maximum elemental resistances as modifiers. Melding, hello? Since we're making elemental mitigation more accessible, We've heavily reduced accessibility to physical damage taken as chaos or elemental damage. Yeah, a lot of people Those called that. Those stats are still around, but you should not expect to be getting full conversion Damn. anymore. All block passives have been buffed, so you can now more easily achieve block cap from just the passive tree. The Keystone Versatile Combatant has been improved to have less of a penalty to maximum block. Okay. A number of Life Leech passives have been buffed, to generally allow for more acquisition of maximum leech rate for life. I'm still waiting for the bad bits. Is, I'm scared. has been reinstated <laughs> to its former glory for instant <laughs> life leech, but only for melee. We've reworked flesh and stone. Previously, this buff skill wow. granted maim and blind, depending on the stance of our character. Now, while in sand stance, the skill simply provides damage mitigation, becoming more effective the closer you are to enemies. Wow. While in Blood Stance, enemies will take more physical damage the closer you are to them. This skill will now greatly favor melee level one. or close range gameplay. Given we're doing a Kalgurian League, Ward has also received a bit of attention. A lot of work. There are new uniques that grant Ward, and the base restoration of Ward is now faster. To compensate, Ulroth's resolve has been nerfed. Yeah, of course it has. But Ward loop builds will still be possible. Anyway, that was most of the purely defensive changes. Now let's look at some of the offensive and utility-based ones. There are more and better ways to deal with mana as an attacker on the southern hemisphere of the passive tree. That's fantastic. Yeah. Well. Wands, daggers, scepters, claws, and staves now have higher critical strike chance values than ever. Wands can go as high as 10% without modifiers. Wow. Sandstorm Visage has been made rarer to compensate oh, instead of reducing not, its power. Wow! Oh, what? With wand attackers, wands what? now have higher attack speed than ever to compensate okay. for their low damage. Wand exclusive skills such as Power Siphon, Kinetic Bolt, and Kinetic Blast now have faster attack times. Impale passives have been revised and in general buffed. Wow. Ugh, oh, Khan, nice. Khan must be the so buffs happy. granted by Warcries yeah. are now simpler, but more significant, and more universal to builds. They also now apply to allies by default. Wow. Oh. Banners have been reworked. Instead of having a reservation cost, they are now free. Okay. However, they don't grant a permanent buff. Ah. Banners now need to be placed for the effect to be active. However, once placed, they are far more powerful than before. So these are like so totems that are immune, there are right? new ways to prolong the yeah. effects yeah. and more ways to invest in them than ever before. Makes sense. Rage has been made more fundamental and discoverable. 
Rage is now multiplicative attack damage, wow. but no longer inherently grants attack speed or movement speed. It has a new cap, and you can find many new passive clusters that allow you to invest into the mechanic. The goal Some is to make like Rage that. more powerful as a baseline and less gated behind the use of specific unique items and ascendancy classes. Berserk has been nerfed, just so you're aware. We have changed how bleed works too. You can now find aggravated bleed on the passive tree. Is that it? When applied, yeah. all bleeds on the enemy will deal damage as if the enemy is moving wow. for the remainder of their duration. The skill and snaring arrow no longer interacts with bleed. Wow, nice. So no more will you have to apply bleeds and swap to a bow. Good. You can now achieve the same result using aggravated bleed passives without the annoyance. Rupture from the Dead Eye has been turned into a support gem. We've added the new overexertion support gem, which highly favors slam builds. Now, it's time to look at a hot topic, magic find. Oh, oh my god. In the Settlers of Kalgar expansion, we are going to be removing item quantity bonuses from all character items. I suggested this. This will not affect existing items oh. in standard leagues. I made a huge Magic video about this. Intended so to be is another bad for access on your gear you can scale once you have achieved the power you want. With item quantity being only available on unique items, this meant if you wanted to get the most out of it, you had to be playing a very specific build. We still want people to be able Queen to invest won. into Magic Find, but we now won. only through item rarity. I was like, there this should be only be rarity on in the game. number of rare item slots and by a much larger number of builds. Oh, so good. What about Ventor's Gamble, you might ask? Wow. Here it is now. Holy shit. I don't want it. This no is quantity. This one of the biggest balance patches I'm we've so ever happy. done. I'm so happy. I can't promise that existing builds will all be safe. Even we aren't able to predict all the outcomes here, nor have we even gone into every single change, just the major ones. I don't know, man. Balance is hard. <laughs> <laughs> but the sheer number of new, viable options uh, is exciting, true. especially for Melee. This is the best thing I've ever and seen. And we're determined to drag the By game far. in a better direction. Be sure to read the patch notes after this. It's going oh. to be a ruckus. Holy fuck. I'm so in 324, right, we hold the end of the experience by introducing a new tier of maps and reworking scarabs. Hold. We want to continue to improve these systems and introduce more exciting in-game content every league. 325 is no exception. Let's check out the myriad of changes coming in Settlers of Kalgur. First up, we are changing many scarabs. We won't go into too much detail here to avoid getting lost in the weeds, but here's a few new ones. Be sure to check out the patch notes after this for more detail. We've also added an additional map device slot, which will be unlocked upon completing your first 10-way Maven encounter. This simply allows for more combinations of scarabs and maps, resulting in more difficulty and more rewards. This is on top of the existing additional slot that can be unlocked by completing your first tier 17 map. There are now six map device slots in total. So cool. You might have seen our teaser, where we revealed we'll be adding new special encounters to the endgame. One such encounter is the Nameless Seer, lurking wow. in tier 16 and Scram 17 that. maps. This NPC will give you a selection of unique items, and you can pick one for free. In tier 16 maps, he now has an additional feature, where you can scry a map. This allows you to swap the divination card drops of the current map with another map on your atlas. Just one caveat. You cannot have the same map be in multiple swaps at the same time. If you want wow. to undo your choice, you can use a scouring orb on either map on your atlas. Wow. Wow. We've also made some updates to a couple of leagues. Blight has been updated with some atlas passive skill changes. And double anointed amulets can now drop in Blight Ravage maps. <laughs> We've also introduced a new type of oil that can only drop from Blighted and Blight Ravaged maps. Huh. Ritual has also been updated. You can now find one new and many reworked base types, new unique items. So much! Slow down! Corpses you can use to raise wow. specters. Hydra is back. And occasionally a fragment, granting access that to the King in the Mist's boss fight from the Affliction League. 
He will drop a number of unique items that were familiar from the league. Jewel. But not that which was taken. As it is oh. now that which was taken away. What? However, he now drops a different modular jewel that you might recognize from the Necropolis League. Uh oh. It's oh. not as exciting. That's not as... Good, nice not as exciting. In 16 and tier 17 maps, <laughs> you can now encounter the Wildwood, also uh, from the Affliction League. Okay. In case you missed it, the Wildwood is a mysterious forest fraught with danger. In the darkness, good, you will find magical wisps yearning for freedom. Upon Give it back releasing to us. them, they will empower the monsters in your map, promising more danger, but more rewards. You may also find random sentinels on the ground near the start of your map. I called it a sentinel. From the Sentinel League. They work in a similar way to before. They aren't items, but you can click on them, and then they can be activated in that area at any time of your choosing. Wow. So no skill Upon tree. activation, they will buff monsters around you. Dude, we're getting so many league stuff. And what? And here's one for those who like to live dangerously. You may occasionally find a reflective Me? mist from the Calandra League. It has two outcomes. It could drop a jewelry item with randomly enhanced or inverted modifier values. Or it can give a reflecting mist item, which can be used on an existing piece of jewelry to perform the same action at oh, a time that's of your choosing. trade it. Good wow. luck. Wow. Okay. Wow. There's many other small changes to league content. We're removing the first 15 most boring waves of the simulacrum and rebalancing its rewards to improve the chances of finding unique jewels. We're also wow. adding some of the beasts from Einhar's memory of harvest beasts wow. to the core pool. Oh. This includes the Black Morrigan. Holy. In other news, we've added a set of new chisel types. There's more! Which can be applied to your maps to get different bonuses. While the cartographer's chisel still increases item quantity, there are new ones that now increase rarity, pack size, increased chance for currency items, divination cards, and scarabs. It's also worth mentioning that chisels now apply 20% quality per chisel to white maps, 10% to yellow maps, and 5% to red maps and It's like the tier 17 uh, Unique multipliers. Unique maps still require the full 20 chisels. Also, wow. only one type of chisel can be applied to a map at a time. During 324, we made a change to tier 17 maps that allowed them to be rerolled with chaos orbs. We are now expanding the currency types that can be used on them to also include currencies like chisels and val orbs. Ultimately, the only restriction tier 17 maps now have is that explicit modifiers cannot be removed from them. We have also revised the difficulty of these maps I hope so. as they didn't quite hit the mark. No, no, they did not. The monsters in them now have substantially less life and deal less damage. Can they deal meaning tier 17 less maps damage? now better fit into the progression between pinnacle and uber pinnacle content. Very good. Lastly, we've adjusted the drop rate of Valdo's puzzle boxes. Previously, we were adapting its drop rate based on the possible outcomes selected by supporters. So many supporters really wanted mage bloods, so the box was hardly dropping. Thus, we have drastically increased the drop rate of the box, but reduced the probability of getting chase unique items from it like mage blood. Overall, we have taken care not to reduce the number of mage bloods total in the economy. We figured it was better to have more tickets for fun rather than barely seeing any boxes That's in fair. the it, it, I got like one box last week. It felt really weird. Improving yeah, the I got none. of Exile experience on Zero. console. Now, we have one more thing to announce before getting into the Q&A. We are soon going to be running a small closed beta test for Path of Exile 2. We have been taking signups for the Path of Exile 2 beta tests over at pathofexile2.com. We will only be selecting a very limited number of people for this first test, but if you want to make sure that you are considered, then head over to the website and register your email address now. We're just about to start the Q&A with Ziggy D. Afterwards, we'll post Path of Exile Settlers of Kalgur's full patch notes. <sighs> with release at the end of next week, our community team will be posting crucial information you'll need for Settlers of Kalgur's release. Keep an eye on the news. On release weekend, we expect to launch the God new damn. mystery box and mm. this season's Kerak's Vault Pass. Thanks for joining us today and checking out our latest developments.